Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And today we're back with the 1978 CB400 Honda Matic. If you guys aren't familiar with the Honda Matic, these, uh, this is not a clutch. This is a parking brake. Pull it, push it, pull it all the way in. And then there you go. That's how you activate it. That's a parking brake. Let it off. But it's a two speed transmission. Still uses a shifter down here, but think about it like an automatic car. When you get up to a red light, you don't have to shift into neutral in an automatic car. You just leave it as it is. And it's really a lot of fun to, to, to ride. You can, you can click it into two and never touch it again and just ride. You pull up at a stop sign, a red light, pull the brake, you let off, just give it some gas and you go. It's really, really nice. Let's just go ahead and start it up because it runs so good. Just starts and fires up. No, the previous owner did pull the the baffle out, so that's why it's got a little throatier sound, if you will. But it's like a top. I mean, and it's in really, really great shape. It's nice and cold, but it's awesome. Everything's in good shape. What we want to do? Let me kill it. What we have to do. To this guy is we noticed that the the chain guard is broken this little tab right here on the bottom is broken and so we want to repair that I could replace it but I love the fact that this guy has a let's see if I can get you guys in here so you can see it it's got a sticker from I don't know if it was when it was sold or if it's somebody that did service on it in its history so I'd rather leave that and shout out to North, North Services in Pittsfield, Mass. So we're gonna do some plastic welding on this to repair it, to save it. That'll be what we do in this video and then we'll work to solve some of the other little things. Just cleaning it up really good. Still looking for exhaust. If anybody has exhaust that, that fit these guys, I'm down for that, that, that are in equal condition as this motorcycle. We'll, we'll do a little bit of work to it over the next couple of months as she's riding it and we're out and about. But let's go ahead and pull off this chain guard and clean that thing up. Okay guys, so here we are. We, uh, you can see the broken piece is right here and this is the metal piece that goes in. We're gonna just melt that right into it and rebuild the plastic up around the bottom. There's two different types of plastic welders. This is just like a, a soldering iron with a plastic piece, with a metal piece on the end that gets super hot, and then these are the, the little plastic rods, welding rods, if you will, that you see here. And then there's this one, which is um, a little different. These are both, this one came from Harbor Freight, this one came from Amazon, super cheap. This one has little staples. So if I still had the, here, I'll put it here so you can actually see it. It, and they go right into the end of the gun. If I still had the plastic piece, the bottom bit, that's what I'd be using. I'd be using the, the weld, this plastic welding gun with the staples from the backside, putting a couple of them in and then putting some more, uh, some more uh, plastic on top. This one, I don't have it. So I'm gonna kind of stick this guy in right here. I'm gonna clamp it down, get it to go in. And then I'm gonna build up some plastic around it. We'll start adding some plastic to it. Let's try that. Let me spin you around. Making sure it's good. Make sure I got you in the right spot. And then just melting this. Stuff will just, you see it start to melt right there. And then I'm just going to feed it into it. Join it with the, the other. Again, I'm just trying to save this. I could easily go and just buy another one of these. Wouldn't be an issue. But... Again, like I said, if you don't have to, if I already have this, why not, why not save it? Save that other one for somebody that really needs it. And I'm not building a concourse rest restoration, right? We're not looking for a 100-point restoration here. We're just looking to make it a, a, a very honest rider. So just taking the time, melting it in. And I may go back after and put a couple of staples in to join these two together. 
which is going to go right there. We'll let that cool. Okay, so what I have now is some of this mesh that comes with the plastic welder. And I cut out a piece that's going to go right here. And I'm just going to embed that in just to bridge the gap between the old stuff, the, the original stuff and the stuff I just made, and to make that a little stronger. So all you have to do is cut out the piece. It's super simple. And then just, I'm just going to heat it up and it'll melt into it. And then I may put a little bit more plastic on top. sit in a little bit this will just strengthen it up right here and just put a little bit more on top this thing is not going to go anywhere Okay, you can see here here we are. We've got the 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 weld complete. I think I may put a little bit more plastic right there only because I didn't see I couldn't see that I, I was missing a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit on top of that mesh that's just showing up. It it mounts all the way down here. You're never gonna see that. You're never gonna see that. I may even take and clean up that little bit of an edge right there. Not much one, just a little bit, just to smooth that out. A little bit of this. Just right there. So now, if I put this guy back on, which I think. So, there. That looks good. Let's go put it back on the bike. There we go. That one started. Get this guy tightened down. There, that's repaired. And I think you'd never know. But I don't have to worry about it. It flopping around. So, because it was kind of flopping around. Guys, it's a quick, easy solution to repair kind of plastic. You can do the same thing on these side covers. If you're doing the side covers, just be, just temper the heat so it doesn't uh, discolor the paint. So just temper the heat a little on and off as opposed to just blasting it. So guys, there you have it. We repaired the chain guard for the 1978 Honda CB400A Honda Matic. Did it with a plastic welder. I think those things are maybe 10, 20 bucks, somewhere in there, somewhere in that range. The other, the, the gun with the staples, that on, on uh, either Amazon or eBay are relatively cheap. I mean, I think they're 20 bucks, something like that. Comes with the staples and everything, so you can use it as much as you like and I've used it a bunch. This guy is back to looking good. We have a few things we have to do moving forward with this so you'll see it on the channel a little bit. Uh, the uh, I've got a leaky carb so I've got to sort out. I got to pull the carbs off. I just noticed that the other day so I got to pull the carbs off and, and go through and clean it and then just little things that we have to sort out kind of knocking off some surface rust that are down in through here just knocking some servers, or giving it a really good clean. See, here's a little bit in here. Just knocking it out, just making it look a little bit better, as we should, because it's a good looking motorcycle. And uh, plus Carrie likes it, she rides it, so why not make it look as good as we can? Okay, here we go. Let's get this sucker started up. It starts right up. Sounds as, as it should. This bike is probably a little louder than what it was stock. Just because some the previous owner thought it was a good idea to cut the the tips of the exhaust off, I guess because he wanted a little bit throatier sound. Let it warm up a little bit. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it in gear. And now it's in first. And I just take off. No clutch. It's pretty crazy, so I can stop here. Hands off the brakes. It's not going anywhere, it's in gear. All I have to do is give it some gas and it'll take off. It's pretty crazy. It's like riding a, a scooter. So we'll kind of 
kind of go through. We'll get on the road up here so we can see a little bit how it works. Break. So there's no way coming. And then we'll kind of hard accelerate. I say hard. Roll off, shift a second, and then now we're just cruising. Don't have to do anything. It's pretty, it's pretty smooth. I mean, I don't have a tack, so I don't know how fast I'm going. I mean, what the RPMs are, but I don't think you need them. Try not to run anybody over, try not to get run over. So just a, a nice little cruiser. It's awesome. It's so smooth. It works and rides so well. The suspension is nice and and just comfortable. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's, the only bad thing is I don't know what to do with my left hand. Is there's so much I want and and my left foot, right? Because normally when you get up to a stop sign, you want to downshift. Maybe I'll engine brake a little bit. Use the the transmission to slow me down, pull in the clutch, get there. But I don't have anything to do with this one. Unless I'm stopping, you know, it, it does nothing. So, meaning parking. Because, I, oh, I can use it to turn my lights on and my blinkers. That's that's my only, oh, I can, I can horn. Other than that, I can't do anything with the left hand. I can only do these switches, right? Just hold on. That's the, the weird part from riding this bike compared to other bikes uh, it's it just takes a few seconds to realize that oh I don't have to do anything it's like going from riding uh, any one of my uh, my motorcycles to ex with the exception of my Kawasaki W1 which has um, the shifters on the right side so the shifter's on the right side, and I don't know what to do. So I don't have to, just while I'm here, I'm just gonna make a U-turn right here. I don't even have to shift out of second. I can just stay in second. You know, I only need to shift when I'm parking and put it in neutral because it will not start unless it's in neutral. So you gotta put it back in neutral. But other than that, I don't need to, I can just, Click in the second and ride it like I stole it and just have a good time. I mean, it's such a, it's so smooth. It's such a great e example. What I was gonna say before is the same thing with not knowing what to do with my left hand is the same thing when I ride my Kawasaki W1 because it's a right hand shift and the shift pattern is just four up. So for the first couple of First couple of minutes, I'm riding it. Every time I get to a stop sign, I'm, I'm shifting gears uh, because I'm, the brake's on the wrong side. Well, it's on the correct side for that bike, but on the wrong side compared to the, all the other motorcycles we have. So, same thing with this one, but this one's a little easier to adjust to. Now, I think Honda was right. This is a great uh, entry-level motorcycle, beginner motorcycle, because you can get comfortable out in traffic, you can get comfortable riding without having to worry about shifting and all that. Then once you add that to it, then it's it's different. There will be a learning curve going from this bike, would have been a learning curve going from this bike to a, a bike with a clutch and uh, actually having to shift the gears. But the, the fear that you, uh, in getting on the bike and getting into traffic is gonna be that learning curve with a new rider is gonna be short. But that's why I think this is a great example. My wife had always wanted one of these, just because, not because she can't shift, she does, but Hey, if I don't have to, why would I? The bike that she rides other than this one is a CB354. And uh, she's got to shift that one and she has no problem doing it. But this one, she can just sit back and cruise, which is what she wants to do anyway. So this bike works out really well. Once I get past this road, we may give it feet of the beans a little bit. Nah, we can't, we got cars, we got kids. But I can, I can get on it a little bit. It's, this motorcycle is plenty capable. You know, I'm gonna downshift to, to first just because we're gonna be going slow. I can tractor through this gravel, but you know, for anybody that said that this, 
that this bike is, it's a, it's a girl's bike. Everybody know it's for girls. For whatever, this bike's completely capable. You could get on this bike and ride it anywhere. And it, it works tremendously and, and it's awesome. So we really enjoy it. It's uh, such a great bike. You know, it's such a great bike. And uh, I really appreciate you guys letting me take you on this little journey. So guys, there you have it. Yet another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. Do me a favor and like, tag, share, and follow us on Instagram. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day.